Hey everyone, it's Cameron with Exodus Trail Cameras and today I am with Chris Creed from Afflictor Broadheads. Chris has been self-sustaining for over 25 years, um, so the greater majority of his life, and he is my go-to when it comes to tree identification and plant identification. And today we are gonna talk all about oaks as they pertain to white-tailed deer hunting. So let's hear from Chris. So I first got interested in trees really as a young kid. My family had always been a family of hunters, but I had a grandfather that was a true woodsman and he really inspired me to, we, uh, we tapped our own trees, make our own maple syrup, we still do that today. We use bark from certain trees to make certain things medicinally or even like hickory bark to make hickory bark syrup. So I started to get fascinated with oaks over 25 years ago uh, for a couple different reasons. The first one was tannin levels, tanning our own hides, and the second one was trying to use acorns to utilize for flour which is a long crazy process and is hardly worth it but if you can't go buy flour at the store it is a great way to get flour so that's what really started me you know which acorns were the biggest which had the most tannin and that developed into which ones the deer preferred most and then that ultimately uh, allowed me to position my stands and my hunting locations better because I knew which trees the deer were going to go to first and why, and which they were going to go to second and why, and it really helped our hunting success. So today the main goal is just to share some of that with you, explain the main difference between red oaks and white oaks and why it's important and very important for deer forage. So the first oak we're going to talk about real briefly is a species of red oak. It's called the shingle oak. Uh, this oak was used by the early settlers, the wood to make shingles for their houses. One thing that sets this oak apart from the rest is that it is the only non-lobed oak that we have in Ohio. So in some of the southern states, you'll see some oak trees, especially the smaller versions, that don't have any lobes on the outside of the leaf at all. This one is the only one in Ohio that does not have any lobes but it has at the very tip the tiny bristle and that gives it away as a red oak. So one of the distinguishing features between reds and white in all of their leaves is the same. All red oaks will have bristle tips, end of story. All white oaks have round lobes, end of story. There's, that's the easiest way to separate everything. And as we go through and look at some of the reds and whites, you'll be able to distinguish and identify quickly the difference between red oaks and white oaks. Now, why is that really important? Well, it's important because the red oaks are typically higher in tannin and usually a secondary source of acorns for deer. Also, the red oaks don't produce every year like typical white oaks do. Now, there's lots of variations, soil types, area, region that contribute to this, but the overall rule of thumb is a white oak will produce every year and usually drop first, and then a red oak produces every second year and usually drop second. Again, there's all kinds of different factors that inform that, including the how the frosts are and storms and everything else to how those red oaks are producing, but that is a good general rule of thumb. So this monster is really common in Ohio. You'll find it everywhere. This is a pin oak. Uh, it's very similar to our scarlet oak. The bark is pretty similar. The leaves are pretty similar. Uh, the differentiation that you're going to see between this and a scarlet, scarlet oak is there's a little bit of a deeper indentation in the scarlet, scarlet oak leaf, but they have basically the same shape, so it's really tough to go by the leaves. Now, one thing about the scarlet oak is it likes hilltops. It likes to be on north-facing slopes, east slopes, and those leaves will turn a nice bright red. So when you're traveling in the fall and you see those big beautiful oaks that are bright red, it's usually the scarlet oak and not the pin oak. As you can see, when the pin oak starts to turn, it keeps this nice beautiful brown color and it kind of tends to hold on to its leaves for a long time. Uh, both of the, uh, the pin oak and the red oak are very similar. Uh, the acorns can be distinguished as on the scarlet oak at the very tip, you'll see a couple little concentric circles, like three little bullseye. And that's basically the only way. They're really tough to tell apart, but they're still an important food source for turkeys and deer. Even though they're not highly preferred over the white oaks, they definitely get eaten and cleaned up by the end of fall. Okay, so this is a good spot to talk about two totally different trees. Now, even though they have a similar trunk diameter, you can look at the bark and you can see that there are some differences. Got this little uh, dark brown, heavily fissured, and you come over here and you kind of got this 
uh, grayer bark that uh, has these transition lines through it kind of looks like big rectangles so just by bark alone you can look on the right here this would be a white oak and on the left this would be a northern red oak now bark can get very confusing um, you can look at a base of a lot of trees and uh, especially a mature swamp white oak and say boy that looks just like a red oak and you can't really distinguish the bark until you start to look up higher on the tree you'll see the bark actually transition mid-level and as you get into the branches towards the top that's when it really starts looking like a white oak so bark sometimes is a pretty tough thing and so then we go to leaves which can also be just as confusing so if we look at some leaves here and at first glance we look at this swamp oak leaf where we have these uh, small little lobes there are no bristles on any of these lobes they're just nice and smooth but if we look at this immature northern red oak they're kind of similar but at the very tip of each one of these is a really fine bristle that's how you determine this red oak from the white oak if we transition over to these two giant trees right here where we have this northern red oak you can see how it has lots of bristles the lobes are not as small they don't go all the way down towards the middle of the vein and they're also wide along the whole uh, main stem so when we looked at the pin oak earlier you saw how those fissures went all the way in and they were really deep grooved here well then the red oaks they're not so they're more of a broad leaf and that will also change as you go up the tree now one of the distinguishing factors for all red oaks and especially the northern red oaks since it's such a big acorn is its cap what it'll help you do to determine if you look at the cap and it only comes to the very top not even the first third of the acorn and it looks like scales like snakeskin if you will or shingles then that's a good indication that you're looking at a red oak when you switch over to a white oak and you look at the cap the first thing you're going to see is lots of bumps okay it's a very very bumpy and uh, it will actually extend a little farther over the nut than the northern red oak does and you'll see that the acorns are longer they're a little bit longer where you get those squatty big fat northern red oaks and when you look at the white oak leaves which is from this tree growing right here you can see the main difference again we have these really deep fissures these really nice round lobes and if we compare that to the northern red oak there's really a stark difference there so it does make it a lot easier to identify and because this oak has more tannins in the acorn the deer will prefer this white oak also in most circumstances this white oak acorn is going to drop early season a lot of them have been dropping for a long time even before october and the red oak usually takes end of october but it is right behind this white oak but since this is sweeter it's preferred no matter what time it falls so if you can find a good patch of white oaks or swamp white oaks you're going to find the acorn that's preferred by whitetail okay so chris wants me to taste the difference between a red oak acorn and a white oak acorn so you're going to be the deer i, I want you to try the white oak first just bite into it just let it get on the side and the tip of your tongue it won't kill you we eat these things all the time but we usually boil them first because they're full of millions of parasites no i'm just kidding <laughs> you can taste the bitter right mm -hmm. okay spit it out all right now try the red oak okay now i have to eat a red oak i'm not responsible for your dinner bills either <laughs> <laughs> immediate difference oh yeah <laughs> that's exactly what the deer are saying it's like terrible. night and day yeah night and day white oaks take taste much better than red oaks if you were wondering <laughs> so this nice deep V barked tree right here is a swamp white oak. Swamp white oaks get huge and they're very prolific in our area. They really like high mineral soils and you can find them anywhere. This is an excellent, excellent tree. If you find some swamp white oaks, you're going to find some whitetails. They're usually really good producers. A big tree like this is going to produce a lot of nuts and it's going to be a really good source for you to find some deer. So one of the key features of the swamp white oak is you can see they have this nice lobe around them. Again, there's no bristles. They're nice and round, white oak family. 
uh, but also there's no deep fissures. So when you look at the regular white oak, you saw that those leaves had these really deep grooves, these really deep fissures, where on the swamp white oak, they do not. It's a nice wide leaf. And then the acorns typically grow on a stem, usually more than one at a time. But one of the distinguishing features of the cap is not only does it have the typical bumps of the white oak, but on the swamp white oak, they typically grow in a pipe-like fashion, where they actually look like a pipe on the end of a stem. This acorn will also be elongated as well. So this is a swamp white oak. This is a lot more immature tree than the one we showed you before in the middle of the woods. This one sits in the corner of a field next to a highway at a pinch point by a creek. And this is what we call a magic oak. So you hear people talk about that every once in a while. What's a magic oak? A magic oak is usually a white oak and it's in a spot that it produces every year and that the deer are just naturally drawn to. Now, Getting over the highway noise here is always a problem when I hunt, but this oak is so popular with the whitetails that year after year we harvest here. It's an easy place to set up a climber right in the wood line. The deer come out to feed here. Uh, this is a really excellent spot. So the white oak here, you can see the bark is gray. It's thinner. It has these nice rectangular shapes. It's usually pretty easy to identify. When you look at the leaf, again, we have multiple lobes that are round with no bristle and they have smaller fissures inside. When we look at that acorn, it's that pipe style and you got all these little knobbies here. Now a lot of people will look at these at certain stages and even on a real mature tree, you'll see this cap, it's over a third down over the acorn, it'll start producing some bristles. And people look at this and say, oh that's a burr oak. It's not. I'll show you a burr oak here in just a minute. It'll blow your mind compared to what a swamp white oak is. So, and there's some other key distinguishing features to help you determine burr oak from white oak. But again, white oak family, excellent, low tannin, preferred by whitetails. So one thing to keep in mind about whitetails when it comes to any browse, but especially acorn, is they have multi-chambered stomach. So what they'll do is they'll eat big for an hour or two, pack that first stomach, which is the rumen, and then they're going to go bed down, and then they're going to allow that to ferment a little bit. They're going to regurgitate it, and then they're going to really chew it up small and swallow it so it can be processed through the rest of the digestive system. So keep in mind when the deer are coming to the oaks, you know, they're going to feed for an hour or two really heavy. They're going to fill up, and then generally they're going to go bed down, especially this time of year. So just for a recap here on white oaks and red oaks, solid rule of thumb, white oaks, round lobes, with no bristles. Red oaks mostly have sharp pointy lobes and they definitely have bristles. Good distinguishing feature. Even though some of the leaves uh, may be similar, especially on immature trees, they'll always have bristles if they're a red oak. Now we talked a little bit earlier about the burr oak and in comparison to the white oak where the white oak cap is nice and bumpy like a typical white oak and it may even have some uh, little filaments coming from it and people may think that's a burr oak but a true burr oak acorn looks like this. The cap will come three quarters over the nut, and in some cases, it will encapsulate the nut almost completely, uh, especially if they're immature um, or they get a worm in them at some stage, they don't fully develop, you'll see them like this. But this is a true burr oak. And when you look at the burr oak leaf, you know it's in the white oak family because of these nice round lobes. They don't have very big fissures and typically, uh, on the burr oak, the leaves will have a wider flare at the tip than they do uh, at the base and they'll narrow down nice and tight. So it's another distinguishing feature. The bark is very similar to the white oak bark. On the white oak, you see these nice deep fissures. Again, the rounded lobes. The acorns here will have the nice bumpy caps and they will be elongated. Swamp white oak, you have these leaves that are still multi-lobed. The fissures are small, the lobes are completely round, and you'll see caps that have nice little bumps on them again with a slightly elongated uh, acorn, uh, but you'll see this pipe structure on, on a lot of the swamp white oak. This one here is a good example as well. When you move into the red oaks, you look at the red oak, the first distinguishing feature on the cap is it's more like shingles or snake scales instead of being really bumpy and raised ridges, and the cap does not go down over the very top of the acorn. They're very loosely attached. 
you'll see that uh, on this northern red oak here, it's a nice broad leaf. The fissures are small, but there are the bristles at each one of the tips. On the pin oak, you see that the fissures are deeper, but you still have all these other bristles. The acorn is much smaller, the cap is tiny, and the acorn is very small, and often on these red oaks, you'll see that they have some striping. On the scarlet oaks, again, if you look, you may see a bullseye down here at the very tip. As we summarize this, if you know your oaks, you'll have a higher percentage of maybe finding some whitetail where they're feeding, when they're feeding. You now know that the red oaks are higher in tannin, they're more bitter. Cameron did a really good taste test for you to show that there's a stark difference. Uh, and when we utilize these for food, uh, the red oak, we have to leach and boil over and over and throw out that water uh, to leach out all those tannins before we can grind it into flour. And the deer don't prefer that very much as well. If you consider that when they are eating, it sits in that room and it starts to ferment, it's only enhancing that bitterness and they got to regurgitate it back up to chew it again. Uh, and they will, and they are still going to prefer that as a higher source of fat over corn and over soybean this time of year. You'll see that your deer are going to flock to your acorns even if they're reds. However, the whites are definitely preferred. They definitely have less tannin and they are a much higher concentrated source for you to be able to find those oaks and see where the deer are moving. Hopefully that helps you out. Moral of the story, early October, get on the white oaks, you'll find the deer. So thanks for tuning in. Uh, if you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. If you have any tips yourself, leave us a comment and uh, smash up the subscribe button for us.